Welcome. Let's discuss the idea of reflecting over the line y equals x. Let's start by drawing the line y equals x. And now, let's just choose a random point. If we want to reflect this point over the line y equals x, think about it as if we're folding this plane over the line y equals x. And if that's the case, then this point that we have on the left hand side, it should end up somewhere on the right hand side of the line y equals x. So we have some sense of direction, but where exactly does it land? The way that we can figure out the image of this reflection is by finding the horizontal distance from this point to the line. Within our coordinate point, when y equals 5, our x value is 2. And at the line y equals x, when y is equal to 5, x is equal to 5 as well. Now we can say that we have a horizontal distance of 3, which is the difference between the x values. After the reflection, this horizontal distance becomes a vertical distance. So now let's find out the vertical distance from the point in our line. So in order that within our line, our y value was 5. If we go 3 down, we end up at the y value of 2. So now we have properly identified the image of point A at the coordinate point 5, comma 2. So let's write down the property that we have just used. Within the reflection over the line y equals x, the horizontal distance became a vertical distance. Now let's do this one more time with a different point. Let's start by finding its horizontal distance. So as the distance from negative 2 to positive 2, it is 4. And from this line, let's move 4 units down. Now we have found out the image of B at the location of 2 comma negative 2. There's a big relationship that we can discuss now that we have done two examples. So if we go back to point A, notice that my original coordinate point was 2 comma 5. And for the image, we got the coordinate point 5 comma 2. So one thing to notice, notice that the x value of the print image is the y value of the image. And the y value of the print image is the x value of the image. We have that same relationship in point B. The x value in the pre-image is the y value of the image, and the y value of the pre-image is the x value of the image. Now we can say that when we reflect over the line y equals x, the x and the y value, they switch locations. When it comes to reflection, the notation that we can use, it's a lowercase r. So the notation that we can use to reflect over the line y equals x is lowercase r and y equals x as a subscript. We can use function notation to represent this relationship that we have just discussed. We can say that we have a function whose name is r equals y equals x, and we have said that we can get a coordinate point, let's call it x comma y. If that coordinate point is my pre-image, then the image is when the x and the y value switch places. So now we can say that the location of the image is y comma x. Now let's take a look at one more example. Let's start by plotting the points. Now let's connect those points. Now let's draw our line y equals x. Now let's remind ourselves of the property that we have just discovered, and that is that when we reflect over the line y equals x, the x and the y values switch location. Point A was defined as negative 2, comma 1, so therefore the image will be 1, comma, negative 2. Let's reflect point B. Its location was defined as negative 1, comma 5. So now the image will be 5, comma, negative 1. Let's reflect point C. The pre-image was defined as 2, comma, 4. So therefore the image will be 4, comma, 2. So now let's connect the image points. 
So essentially, what we have done, we reflected triangle ABC over the line y equals x to obtain triangle a prime b prime c prime. If we want to use function notation to represent this reflection, we can say that there was a reflection over the line y equals x. Now let's pick one of the points. Let's pick a. So we got point a, which was defined as two comma one, and now its image was a prime, which now is at location of one comma negative two. Let's show this using function notation for point b. And now let's use function notation to show the reflection for point C. Notice that all that we have done, we have just shifted the location for every single point in the triangle. And if that is the case, the pre-image is congruent to the image. So we can say that this reflection, it's an isometry. But generally speaking, regardless of what line it is, every reflection will always be considered an isometry. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.